Hi guys, happy Monday. I hope you're all having an amazing start to your week. Welcome back to our weekly MMQA. We have some fabulous questions, so let's jump right in, shall we? Starting with the first one from Kimberly K. What are your thoughts about luxury outlet malls? Example, the Gucci outlet. Do they have the same quality bags? Um, all right, so I have purchased some items from a few uh, luxury outlet stores in the past, so I can't speak for all of them, but the ones that I have, I have definitely noticed a difference. Uh, there are some brands that, ma that make items specifically for their outlet stores. However, they also have items that come directly from the boutiques. Uh, sometimes you're able to find ready-to-wear, couture, one-of-a-kind pieces at some awesome, awesome savings. So it really depends on, um, on the brand or sometimes it depends on the season. Um, but yeah, a lot of these brands do end up making items specifically for their outlets that you won't be able to find in the boutiques whatsoever. Sometimes you'll be able to, like for example, you might see a wallet that looks very similar to something in the, in the boutique, but it might have a slight difference as far as the type of hardware. It might have a slight difference as far as the type of material that they end up using. You know, it just, uh, it really is a case by case scenario. But what I really like about these outlet stores not only do you get some um, awesome pieces at fabulous prices but I really appreciate the fact that in my experience the sales associates that I spoke with they were very forthcoming they were very open they were very transparent about the products that they end up selling um, if you were to ask them is this item from the boutique they'd say no you know, uh, this item is strictly for our um, for our outlet stores. Um, there is something that's similar at the boutique and then they'll kind of go uh, in depth on that, but they always give you so much information. They're not trying to portray something that isn't there. They're not trying to make it pass for something that you can get at the boutique. They're just like, you know what? No, uh, this is just for the outlet. That's why you're able to get it at the price that it, you know, that it has. Um, but I have gotten items from Gucci and Prada in the past. Uh, and like I said previously, I was able to notice a slight difference. And one of the things that always stood out to me were their dust bags. Um, so back in the day, Gucci's handbags their dust bags had this very uh, thick cotton material that you couldn't see through. And I noticed some of the pieces at the outlets, um, they had the, the dust bag was a lot more, it was very see-through and it was of a thinner material. So sometimes the quality might be exactly the same. Other times there might be a very slight difference between the materials uh, and that's why they have them at the outlet. You know, it's been a while, a little while since I've been into the luxury outlet stores. And as I said before, I do like them. You can get some awesome, awesome pieces Pieces. And uh, when you are able to find those, um, you know, those boutique pieces, again, those prices are insane. I remember one time I went into the Gucci outlet and I saw a couture this couture cocktail dress, oh my goodness, it was just insanely gorgeous. I think it retailed for like 6,500 or something like that. And they had it at the outlet for like 1,800 bucks, you know? So um, I just the beading on it, it was just, and they had sequins, so automatically, you know, I was like, whew, <laughs> I was drawn to it, you know? But um, yeah, you can get some awesome, awesome savings. But once again, I personally did notice a difference with the items that I had in my collection before. Uh, whether it was a handbag or whether it was a wallet. Uh, but I would love to know your guys' opinion. For those of you that have purchased from the outlet, how were the items wearing? Do you notice a difference between the the quality when it, the quality, the quality when it comes to boutique versus outlet? Let us know in the comment section down below. But fabulous question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Lux Lover VB81. Have you ever repurchased a bag or smelled of the good you previously sold but seller's remorse made you backtrack? I let my reverse pochette Matisse go when it cracked about a year ago. First one, but I am going back to get it. That is awesome. I'm so happy to hear that you're adding it back into your collection. And fingers crossed that the second one doesn't have any issues so that way you can have it for a long, long time. Um, all right. So, yes, I have had to or I have repurchased an item uh, due to seller's remorse. It made me backtrack. Uh, and it was a bag. Well, I should say a silhouette. And that is the Louis Vuitton pochette accessoire. At one point in time, I had this in the three canvas prints, the Demi Zor, the Demi Ben, and the monogram. And um, I decided to sell them all because at the time, um, I still loved them, but I thought that I had way too many, many bags. And even though I enjoyed them, I really ended up gravitating towards the other bags that I had within my collection. So once again, I sold them all. And I think it was probably either a year or maybe a year and a half later that I decided to 
go back <laughs> and uh, and get them again. Uh, and I promised myself this time I was not going to let them go. But uh, I ended up getting the Damia Ben and the Monogram. I passed on the Damia Zor on adding that one again. I still loved it. But with the first one that I had, I started to have a lot of issues with the zipper. It started to change color. I tried to clean it as best as I could and uh, to no avail. So I figured if it happened with that one, and I was really careful with it, um, that maybe it would happen again. So I just decided against it, but still. I absolutely love this bag, you know, it has a great price point. I love the size. It's versatile. If it's all of my daily essentials, I also like adding a longer strap to it so that way I can use it crossbody. Um, but yeah, it's got to be this guy right here. And the funny thing is, is that, I mean, I raved about it when I had them. I raved about them after I sold them. You know, so it's like, wh why did I get rid of it? Why did I get rid of it? Especially if it was a bag that I enjoyed so much, you know? So I'm very happy that I was able to uh, to get my hands on these again. Um, but that would be the one. The only other thing, it's not necessarily that I repurchased the same bag, but it's very similar. Uh, at one point in time, I had the classic Speedy uh, 35 in the Damia Ben and in the Monogram, and I decided to sell both of those, so that way I can get the 30 in Mon Mono. And then uh, years later, I was able to find the 30 uh, classic in London. Um, but yeah, so that that's why I said it's kind of like I sold those and repurchased it, but not really, because it's a different size. <laughs> I don't know, but I am curious, what about you guys? Has there been a handbag or a small leather good that you have had to repurchase um, or that you have repurchased because of seller's remorse or anything like that? Let us know in the comment section down below. But great, great question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Gabby L 613 How do you think that Louis Vuitton canvas small leather goods compared to Chanel in terms of durability? This is an awesome, awesome question and in my experience throughout the years, I've had to take Louis Vuitton small leather goods in to get repaired, uh, either because the zipper wasn't working properly or because the varnish on the exterior started to wear and, and it was going to affect uh, the canvas. It might end up cause it, it might end up causing it to crack as time goes by. Um, whereas with my Chanel pieces, I have yet to take any in for repair. You know, and yes, those items do have wear on the hardware, uh, but I haven't had any issues with pop stitches. I haven't had anything happen to the item where it will cause the leather to tear um, or anything along those lines. You know, and like I said previously with Louis Vuitton, it was because of the varnish. Um, it might end up causing it to get into the canvas. And once the canvas cracks, there's nothing that you can do. They can't end up repairing it. Um, so in my case, um, I feel that Chanel is a lot more durable than Louis Vuitton. Um, on that same note, three of my top small leather goods of all time are from Louis Vuitton. And I absolutely love their canvas small leather goods. I think that they're fabulous. Those top three you guys know are the clay, the mini pochette, and the six ring key holder. So I think that with uh, the difference between the two is that for the most part, Louis Vuitton small leather goods do end up having that varnish along the sides, whereas with Chanel, uh, it's stitched. So you don't have that varnish that you have to worry about. So if it's, uh, for example, a, a wallet that you interact with that has a lot to do with it as well. Uh, so if it's a wallet that you constantly open up, if it's a bifold, if it's a trifold, uh, the stitching will end up wearing a lot better than the varnish because the varnish, as time goes by, it'll start to get weak in those spots where the... Um, where the folds are and it'll cause it to crack and then that crack or that varnish might end up uh, going away completely and it might cause the canvas to end up cracking. You know, but again, this has just been my experience. I still love them both, um, but I'm very happy to say that I have yet to have any issues with, uh, with my small leather goods from Chanel. And you guys know I'm pretty hard on my small leather goods as well, especially when it comes to wallets or six ring key holders. I don't wanna have to baby them. I don't wanna have to worry about this or that. I just wanna be able to throw them in my, in my bag, take them out when I need them and not have to worry about, you know, how I'm using it or anything like that. 
But uh, again, that has been my experience between the two. I still have mad, mad, mad love for Louis Vuitton Small Leather Goods. Like I said before, um, they have so many amazing, amazing pieces. They have so many things to choose from. And I also love the versatility that they have. You know, you don't necessarily have to use the key pouch for your keys. You can use it for various other things or the mini pochette or, I mean, the list goes on of the fabulous small leather goods that they have. Um, but I also don't feel that they're as durable as Chanel and uh, I also experienced the same thing with my uh, my emprunt clays I had those things for years and the varnish ended up melting uh, which was a major bummer because I had to I had to let go of them I, I have one left in the pink um, which <laughs> I'm like please don't let anything happen to it I absolutely love that piece um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely, uh, been quite a, quite a bummer, but I would love to know what about you guys, for those of you that do have both of these fashion houses, when it comes to small leather goods, which one do you feel is more durable? Let us know in the comment section down below, but fabulous question. And hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Christina Ferraro. What do you think about the Trocadero Richelieu, hopefully I'm saying that correctly, sneakers from Louis Vuitton? They remind me of Vans, which are my favorite shoes. I know you love them too. So I would like to know your opinion on them. I've never owned a pair of Louis Vuitton shoes, so this would be my first. Um, all right, so before I get any further, let me insert a picture of these sneakers and I will also do a side-by-side -side with Vans. So the Trocadero sneaker is available in a variety of different prints and different colors. Uh, that right there is from uh, their newest collection and it retails for $790 here in the States. It's available in two different colors, the white that you just saw and black. And I gotta tell you, all right, I think that these shoes are incredible. I think that they're fabulous. I think that they're absolutely beautiful. And you are right, they look identical to Vans, identical to Vans. So for myself, um, I'm kind of 50-50 on them. I have a bit of an inner struggle because you guys know that I am a die hard. I am a die hard Vans fan. I always have been, I always will be. I mean, they've been with me since the beginning. They will be with me until the bitter end. So there's a part of me that feels like I'm cheating on them because Louis Vuitton took inspiration from Vans to make these shoes. You know, I haven't tried them on, uh, so I don't know how, you know, if they're comfortable or anything like that. But I remember the first time I laid eyes on them. Um, I actually did a vlog at Louis Vuitton. It was either six or seven months ago. And I had to do a double take because I was like, wait a minute, are, th are those Vans? What? Uh, they were in Epi leather, but they look... I mean, they look exactly the same. So part of me is like, oh my gosh, I love it because it's the monogram canvas. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, it's, they're, they're vans. They're the authentic vans, the authentic style. Uh, but the other part of me is like, how dare, how dare they take the, the authentic silhouette and put their spin on it, which I know we've talked about before because brands and fashion houses, um, they're always taking inspiration from each other and putting their own spin on it, which I think is great. But I'm just like, why? Why did you have to take from Vans? Why couldn't you take it from that brand or that brand and leave my beautiful Vans alone? <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense. I probably sound like a crazy person, but yeah, I'm like 50-50 because they are insanely beautiful. I think they are, you know? Um, and there have been a few times, I gotta be honest with you, there have been a few times where I have that inner struggle so much, but at the same time, I've had them in my cart multiple times. I add them in my cart because I haven't gone into the boutique to try them on. I've added them into my cart and then I'm like, no, I can't, I can't do that because I feel like I'm not being loyal to, to Vans. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that, like I said before, if that makes sense or not, but I feel bad. I kind of feel bad, but they're so beautiful. So I don't know which side will end up winning. I have no idea if I'll give in to it uh, because for me, it's like the best of both worlds. It's Louis Vuitton and it's the Van Silhouette that I absolutely love combined into one. Of course, the price point doesn't make me feel warm and fuzzy, but um, 
yeah, so I don't, <laughs> I don't think I'm being very helpful. My apologies for that. Um, because I do think that they're gorgeous. I do think that they're just insanely, insanely beautiful. I know they're not everyone's cup of tea, but they're mine. Um, and Christina's obviously. Um, but I just, I don't know. I don't know. If any of you guys do have these shoes, let us know how you like them in the comment section down below. So good luck. Again, I apologize for this not being very helpful, but if you do end up getting them, let us know how you find them. But great, great question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Dan and Teeters. I am wondering, what do you think of the Celine Classic box bag? It has caught my eye because it's understated, but at the same time, I almost wonder if it's too understated. You can get nice dupes for under 100 and it's close to 4,000. I know the leather quality would be different, of course, but I'm just not sure if I think that it's worth it. Um, all right, so before I get any further, let me insert a picture of the Celine box bag right now. This bag is stunning, and just like you said, it is very understated, and for me personally, that's the one thing that I appreciate about it the most, so much so that I've been doing quite a bit of research on it, and it's on my wish list, just because I love the fact that it's so simple that its beauty speaks for itself without having all of these bells and whistles. You know, I know to each their own, but for me, I just think that it's wonderful, you know, but I can definitely understand your point of view that you're saying that maybe it's a little too understated, um, but I feel that when it comes to Celine, when it comes to to the box bag the leather is just it just it just speaks for itself you know it speaks for itself and um, of course this bag also is mostly made of the smooth leather so the one thing to note about that is that with smooth leather as beautiful as it is um, it does end up showing scratches a little bit easier the more and more that you use it but I love the fact that this bag comes with a removable adjustable strap. I also like the accordion style that it has as far as how you open it. So that way if you need to carry a little bit more with you, you have a little bit more give. So if you carry a little bit less or a little bit more, you have, um, you know, it has a little bit of, uh, of play to it. Uh, but I think it is just insanely, insanely gorgeous. Another thing to note is that unfortunately it doesn't hold its resale value. So as you mentioned, um, it's close to $4,000 and on the pre-love market, you can find them at either a 50% off savings, a 60% off savings from retail. So if you didn't want to go the dupe route, uh, maybe take a look at the pre-love market. You might be able to get on there for you know $1,500. I've seen some for $2,000. Of course, there are some others that I've seen for like $2,900 and $2,800. It just depends upon where you decide to get it as far as the pre-love market. Um, but yeah, I just, I think it is just absolutely beautiful and for myself because like I said before this bag is on my wish list I am looking to get it on the pre-love market because of that because it doesn't hold its resale value uh, so I don't know if this is a bag that you know I see having in my collection for 10 years time I don't know but as of right now it was for the last couple of months um, I've really been eyeing it I've been doing a ton of research and I really want to add it to my collection but pre-loved going pre-loved is definitely going to be the way for me but um, I think it is absolutely, absolutely stunning. So I don't know if this ends up helping you out, but for any of you that do have the Celine box bag, how do you find it? Is there anything that we need to know? Let us know in the comment section down below. The more information, the better. But uh, if you do decide to go for it, congratulations on your soon to be bag. And if you decide to go the dupe route, congratulations on that bag as well. But fabulous question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Ava S. Do you think you'll ever splurge on ready to wear? I know you're a casual dresser, so maybe some tees, why or why not? Um, all right, so I do appreciate ready to wear and I do think that some of the designs are very, very cute. But for me personally, it would have to be something extraordinary for me to want to drop that kind of money on it or something that I know I will be able to get, you know, use out of, or something that will pay for itself a thousand times over, you know? And um, sometimes, sometimes I feel that when it comes to ready to wear, a lot of the designs are very fleeting. You know, to me, it almost feels like fast fashion with a luxury price and a luxury name, you know? And I'm not talking about classics such as the Chanel tweed jacket or anything like that. I'm more so talking about the seasonal pieces that end up coming out. Again, I think that they're very, very cute and I, I can definitely appreciate them. 
I think the t-shirts look amazing the way people rock them. But for me personally, it's not something that uh, I ever see. I, I don't ever see myself going for it. Um, you know, I'll just stick to, uh, I'll just stick to my Zara. I'll stick to my TJ Maxx. That way I can splurge on handbags, small leather goods, and sometimes shoes. Kind of like those Louis Vuitton sneakers that we, <laughs> that we talked about earlier. Um, but yeah, I'm not trying to take away anything from ready to wear by any means whatsoever. Um, it's just personally not for me. Um, I do have a Burberry coat. I have a Burberry coat that I don't wear too often because it's very, it's very, very heavy. It's beautiful. It's very heavy. Um, but um, it, we don't really get the type of weather that I would be able to to rock it all the time in or anything like that, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, ready to wear just personally isn't for me. But some some design, some styles, I think they look amazing. And when I see uh, the runway shows, I'm like, oh my gosh, that dress looks amazing, or this, you know, this skirt looks amazing, or what have you. Uh, but it's definitely something that I appreciate from afar. Um, and I can appreciate on others, just not on myself. But I'm curious, what about you guys? Do you own any ready-to-wear? How do you feel about ready-to-wear? Let us know in the comment section down below. But great, great question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. And the last question from EMR, what are your top five of the last decade, handbags and small leather goods? Um, all right, so instead of doing five of each, I just wanted to bring out some of those items because otherwise um, we all know that I can tuck your ear off. I can talk until the cows come home when it comes to these items. So as far as handbags go, two of those top five are definitely the, the first one being the Chanel wallet on chain. And as many of you know, this is a forever piece for me and um, I love it now as much as the day that I got it, uh, probably even more so, just because it's small but it packs a punch. For me, this is the perfect travel bag just because it is so carefree due to the caviar leather. And I also like how generous the strap drop is so that way you can use it crossbody. You can kind of double up the strap and have it as a mini bag. And in my opinion, I know that uh, to each their own, but in my opinion, I feel that this bag definitely has a lot more pros than cons. Um, it has quite a bit of wrinkling along the bottom because we all know, yes, I tend to overstuff this thing, uh, but I've had it for going on almost six years six years and uh, I still absolutely, absolutely love it. Um, all right, the next one is of course the Fendi Mama Baguette. As I said in the last uh, couple videos uh, this month, definitely one of my best purchases, one of my best purchases of the decade and easy, you know, easy to use, grab and go. Um, and um, I'm, I'm mad about it. I'm absolutely mad about it. Uh, as far as small leather goods, the first one is the YSL uh, card holder and the black pebbled leather with the silver hardware. Uh, this is hands down, hands down, my go-to when it comes to flat card holders, uh, just because of how durable the leather is. It's held up insanely well. I love the fact that you do have four credit card slots, and you also have this top one, so a total of five. Uh, so you can really downsize from a large size wallet into this without necessarily taking too much out and only being limited to, you know, maybe two credit card slots or anything like that. A close second as far as card holders is, of course, that Chanel with the Swarovski crystals that I had blinked out for my birthday. <laughs> uh, but this one definitely uh, made the list for top five within the last decade. The other one, I mean, come on the coach with the ruby slippers from Wizard of Oz because I mean, I don't think I even have to talk about this because you can you can definitely see the huge, gigantic smile on my face every time that I end up bringing it out. But um, it's just, it's, it's perfect in every way. I wouldn't change a thing about it, you know, and the fact that it is coach, one of my first loves, makes it that much more special. But Wizard of Oz, I mean, it's like, it's, it's the best of both. It's the best of both worlds. Uh, and the last small leather good would be the Louis Vuitton mini pochette. Uh, now this guy I ended up getting after I sold, uh, I had the mini pochette in the trunks and lock limited edition uh, collection. I sold that one and then I can't remember like how long after I ended up getting this one, but I, I've still had it for, I think maybe five or s five years, six years something like that. I had the Damien Aben 
a lot longer. But uh, those are two of the bags that are my top five and three of the small of the goods. But like I said before, I could talk about these things. I could bring out the others and talk. I could make a whole video on them, but <laughs> but I'm not I'm not going to do that. But I would love to know what are some of your top items from the last decade. Let us know in the comment section down below. But fabulous question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. All right, you guys, that does it for Minx Monday Q and A. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope I was able to help you guys. Had some awesome questions this week. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give it a thumbs up, and I will see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.